so I've been doing a ton of questing on my Iron Man, and with only 5 quests remaining I began to wonder how many times have I withdrawn my trusty hammer from the bank, or how many coins have I spent on these quests? And with the new old school quest Sins of the Father releasing, what better of a time to dive into these questions? So I decided to do a bit of digging and was able to find a reddit post from 5 years ago titled The Wait Is Over, Full Quest Item List from user RedEye99. This spreadsheet was a great start to my research, with the fourth tab containing a list of every item needed to complete all RuneScape quests. However, this list was as of 2015 containing only the original OSRS quests, and furthermore, there were other fields I wanted to dive even deeper into. So here's what I did, and I'll try to keep it quick because no one cares about Microsoft Excel. Step 1. I wikied every quest and copy pasted the required items into the spreadsheet. I then added all the fields I wanted to analyze as new columns. Next, I standardized all the item names making sure they matched, color-coded line items into four categories, and filled in the amount column. Step 4 was the tedious process of looking up the GE price of every unique tradable item in the list. And finally, with squeaky clean data, I ran pivot tables to analyze the fields I had identified and added. A couple of notes on the methodology before we jump into the results. This spreadsheet is just tracking the required items from the OSRS wiki. No recommended items are included. One of the biggest challenges with this list was trying to be as objective as possible with the ambiguous item requirements. For example, requirements like some runes, some food, a weapon, or any pickaxe were excluded from the analysis and color-coded red for being vague or overly broad, whereas requirements such as one cast of Crumble Undead were included and split out into their respective runes. Considering these types of decisions and their frequency, I would say this analysis has about 2% subjectivity to it. Okay, let's look at some fun facts before we fully dive into the analysis. In total, I ended up with 971 line items in this spreadsheet, which narrows down to 389 unique items. Touching back on the color coding mentioned earlier, Here's how the data distributes. Standard items in green represented 81.2% of lines. Quest items or untradeable items in yellow represented 10.4% of lines. Ambiguous or overly broad descriptions in red represented 7.5% of lines. Lastly, quests with no item requirements in brown represented 0.9%. In total, there were 8 quests with no item requirements. The most frequent occurrence of a quest item are the Ghost Speak Amulet at 7 occurrences, the Draymon Staff at 6, and Cats at 4. The top 3 most frequent items in the ambiguous category were any pickaxe at 27, any axe at 13, and a light source at 11. The quests with the most requirements are as follows Recipe for Disaster at 50 line items, Song of the Elves at 30, and Legends Quest at 26. The most expensive quests are Desert Treasure at 32k, Song of the Elves at 24.1k, and the Fremnic Exiles at 24k. Okay, with that out of the way, let's take a look at the results and see if we can identify RuneScape's most important quest item. To do this, we can look at a number of different metrics, occurrences, amount, and cost. Funnily enough, coins were actually the highest in each metric, with occurrences in 35 quests and 42,372 being the amount and cost. However, I didn't think it would be fair to consider RuneScape's currency in the same regard as other items, so with that asterisk and exclusion, let's get into each metric. The first metric we can look at is the number of occurrences, or how many quests does this item show up in? On screen, you can see a list of the most frequently occurring quest items. In the first spot is the tinderbox with 35 occurrences, in second is the hammer at 32, and in third is the spade at 27. While the first method looks at an item's number of occurrences in quests, it doesn't necessarily account for the amount of item needed. In this metric, we'll be calculating the amount by taking occurrence times amount of item needed. When we look at the top 10 highest amount required, we see a different looking ranking. First being steel nails at 385, in second is feathers at 156, and in third is astral runes at 102. This is definitely an interesting metric to look into, 
but I don't think it's the best metric to determine the most important quest item, as a high amount of an item in one quest can drastically skew the item's amount to the top of the list. Finally, I wanted to look at the highest costing items across completing all quests in Old School RuneScape. By taking the amount and multiplying by the GE price or store price, we can analyze these results. Let's look at what items will cost you the most in total on your way to the quest cape. In the one spot are Limpwort Roots, totaling 18.6k, in second are Planks, costing 18.2k, and in third are Astral Runes, costing 17.9k. To me, number of occurrences is the best metric to determine Old School RuneScape's most important quest item. By seeing how many quests the item appears in, we can see its relevance to questing. So congratulations to the Tinderbox for being Old School RuneScape's most important quest item, at least in my eyes. But I'd love to hear what you all think. Should the other metrics have an influence as well? Or would you include other metrics I didn't dive into? Let me know in the comment section below. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the premiere episode of OSRS Analytics. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing or leaving a like on this video. And if you have any ideas on future analysis you want me to run, I'm open to ideas. I'll leave the data and spreadsheet I worked off of in the description of this video. And for more old school content from me, follow the link here.